Welcome, everybody. We're going to be talking about two types of concentration calculations today, molarity and molality. Both of them will tell you how strong or weak, diluted or concentrated, however you want to think about it, a solution is. But there's different ways of calculating it. As you see here, molarity is measured, and that's with a big M. So I could have like a, for instance, six molar solution, big M, six molar solution of, let's just say, HCl. That would mean that I have six moles of solute. My solute would be the HCl that's dissolved in water. We're talking about aqueous solution for the most part here. So out of that, that would mean I'd have six moles for every one liter of solution. So what molarity is, is how many moles of the solute is dissolved in the solvent, but the volume is of the whole solution, not just of the solvent. That is a little different than the equation for molality, molarity and molality. Molality, which is signified with a italicized M, is how many moles of solute there are but not in liters of solution, but in kilograms of solvent. So this can change. Um, molarity and molality are, can be close a lot of times, but they're not totally the same. This will not change with temperature at all. Molarity can change with temperature a little bit. And the reason why is this volume, this liters of this liters of solution we have here. Remember, volume changes with temperature change. Even if it's a liquid, it changes a little bit with, with temperature change. So because of it because it changes with temperature change, this can change a little bit with temperature where molality can't. So that's what makes molality special and we'll see why we need a little bit more in chapter thirteen. So let's go ahead and practice some problems using these two equations. So we're going to go through the four problems on your sheet and calculate molar using the molarity and molality equations we just talked about. This first one is probably the most easy type of molarity question you could ever um, see because it is using the equation moles of solute over liters of solution. And I can just plug it in plug in the givens to me. 3.21 moles is given, divided by the total volume of the solution. And when I do that in my calculator, I have three sig figs, and I get 0.187 molar is how you would say it. It's a 0.187 molar solution of NaCl. All right, so that's the first one about the easiest types of molarity question you get to get because you have moles and you have liters and all you need to do is divide. Number two is a little different. Notice how we're looking for molality now. Remember molality is an italicized M. That's an italicized M. And it's moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. And if I keep equaling those, I'm not given kilograms of water, but I'm given 4,000 grams of water. So I can convert that to kilograms. Since there's a decimal here, that means all those zeros are significant. Now, this isn't in moles, so I'm going to have to do a little dimensional analysis to solve for that. So I'll have 42.2 grams of KNO3. And I need to convert that to moles of KNO3 because this is not we do not use grams in this equation. We use moles. So grams of KNO3 per one mole. If I look at my periodic table and add all those together, I get 101.11 grams per one mole. That gives me 0.4173672, but I'm just going to do this because I know I need to keep those numbers, carry them through, and now those, that number belongs up here. That's how many moles I have carried out my calculator of KNO3 per kilogram. 
If I divide those now, I get 0.104 molal. Again, it's an italicized M. That's why I'm showing it to the side. It's not a meter. It's a molal. So that would be taking the same an equation like the number of one, but we aren't given the moles. We have to convert it to moles to solve for it. Anytime you can rewind this and rewatch, make sure you are understanding what we're doing. Number three, how many moles of glucose would you need? Okay, so now I'm using the molarity equation. Moles of solute divided by liters whoops, of solution. Now I'm given the molarity, 3.25, and I'm given my volume so I can solve for moles. So moles, if I multiply both sides by liters of solution, my moles will equal. So I go moles of solute equals liters of solution times molarity. In this case, it's 1.00 liters times 3.25 molar. And the reason I can cancel that out is because molarity is moles per liter. So the liters will cancel. That's moles per liter. And liters will cancel and I'll just have moles left over. So in this case, pretty easy math, 3.25 times 1, that is that many moles of glucose, C6H12O6, would be needed to dissolve to make that. That's how many moles. Now we don't have a mole balance, and this is the type of problem that I have to do a lot while teaching, and that is making solutions. So something like number 4, I'll need a 0.5 molar solution or a 3 molar solution. I need to make it. And to make it, I need to do a calculation like this. So I have molarity equals moles of, of solute over liters of solution. Again, I'm given my molarity and I'm given my liters. So I can solve for the moles. But then I'm going to have to convert that to grams. So it's going to be just like the last one, times liters of solution. And that is equal to 0 0.500 molar times the liters, which is 4.00 liters, which is going to equal 2.00 moles of ACL. But that's not the question. It doesn't say how many moles. It says how many grams. So I'm now going to have to convert that 2.00 moles of KCL to grams, kind of like we did up in number 2, but it's kind of working backwards now. So how many moles of KCL? How many grams are in each mole? That's if I add a K plus a CL, 74.55 grams KCL per one mole, multiplied by 2, and I get 149 grams of KCL. So those are some types of problems we can be doing with molarity and molality. We'll be talking about percent concentration and parts per million also in class, but this gets us a good start on concentration type problems.